very strongly support anything that can enthuse high school students because you want people to do maths, physics, chemistry, etc. at uni. Um, they've got to be fired up at high school, we generally think. Um, and so we've got um, uh, we've got 12 geologists and every single one of them has been chosen because they've got a really strong basic science background. So um, we're really pleased to be able to assist and give some practical examples of um, just things that we face every day that might help the students, um, student teachers put their lessons together to really enthuse the kids and um, hopefully get them to uni and hopefully do a massive amount of science. So they're the ones that we find the most employable. The thing that struck me when I was talking to the education students about their various projects was how much it enabled them to understand the practical application of STEM. They're not STEM students. They're not trying to get STEM degrees, and that had been my experience was dealing with students who were focused on STEM. So it was really interesting to deal with students who were looking at STEM from a practical application. How could they take STEM and use it to advance something? How could they take STEM and use it to interest others in what they were doing? And I think it was one of the most rewarding sessions I've been involved with because they'd all come at different problems and tried to bring STEM into it from an understanding of the problem and then applying STEM. STEM students look at STEM and then find a problem to apply it to. The second stage was that one group of two students um, then came directly to me to ask me whether I would accompany them on their journey with the host. So I met with their host and them as they initially presented their idea, had an dis initial discussion with the host, and then I went for their final presentation. Um, and in the interim, we had a few brief chats over the email and maybe one or two phone calls. What did I observe? The students were incredibly clever. That was the first thing. They, they were really clever, they were really engaged, and they were really enthusiastic. Now, I love students anyway, but these students were incredibly engaged. But being having your ideas pulled apart and criticised can be quite confronting, but the students were right up for that. They really wanted to get into those discussions. They were really good at pulling together the knowledge that they had, the company requirements, and that scientific criticism that we gave them. And for me, anything that I can do to then make it more relatable for students is obviously going to be beneficial to their engagement and get them into careers in STEM, because we've all said that's where workforce is going. So going out to a mining company, so we actually, Rachel and myself, went to um, CIMEC Mining. And so for us, we then got to see where they're using it. So that when we give an example in the classroom of maths, we're not using the pretend real world examples, I call them, of like, there's a shadow on a tree and let's calculate the, um, the hypotenuse and things like that. We actually can say, no, they use that, they use trigonometry when they're looking at the angles in which they are drilling into the ground. And all of a sudden it kind of brought about more than a line on my resume, but I actually can be a better teacher because I now have an experience that I can directly draw on in my classroom. And learning about the application of physics and chemistry <coughs> and everything that they're doing and how that industry actually works was first of all very, very motivating. Bridging the Gap kind of program was really beneficial personally for me um, because again, just like Danica said, you can really see how, first of all, industry actually works here in Adelaide and then apply that with enthusiasm from your own perspective rather than trying to draw from it from a not, not very, you know, because it's a personal experience that you've now had and you can give that to your students now. And like, even, though, even though I went to SA Power Networks, you could still see that there are aspects of all of the sciences coming together. There's a lot of biology in that as well. Yeah, student, one of the students says, um, um, she said, I know now that I can reach out to industry and develop authentic learning. And I reckon that, that's, that is the key um, of um, the, the teacher and the teacher's practice. Um, if we can um, have pre-service teachers going out with that kind of thinking, um, then when the time is right, um, they will reach out to industry to um, produce authentic learning. Um, they had a view of STEM that it wasn't just um, uh, more science, more technology, etc., etc. Um, and they also wanted to, as I said before, develop authentic learning. So that they wanted to make it real. They wanted to have the real world in their classroom. Um, and they wanted to, you know, they wanted to take their students from 
that question that comes out, why do I need to know this, to students who say, I can see myself in this. And we talked about all the different types of science used there and how we can help our students develop those skills that will be useful in industries, just like Swimex. So instead of those maths problems that say, Johnny bought 17 oranges and whatever, <laughs> that are very unrealistic, this is something that we can definitely take back into the classroom and be meaningful for students. But it also means that they are working with local data and addressing local problems. And so that was really the big kicker there. They could think about things that were, were close to their own hearts. And what I've tried to do really is we talked about making, giving students access to real world problems. One of my biggest tasks with working with those faculty is helping them to understand where data lies and how they can access data that's used by lots of different entities in our region and bring that real world information to problems they want to address, sometimes even helping them solve problems in the process. Um, so incorporating physics, incorporating maths, incorporating chemistry, um, trying to get uh, power lines through trees and cutting down trees and where to cut down trees and the biology and geography and everything's in there all at once. Um, and then we got given some questions to look at. They'd already come up with some questions for us, particularly um, relevant to them. Some of that they'd already um, solved, which was really cool. Last year they had some um, students come along, still part of the Bridging the Gap project, um, students come along and uh, solve, try solve for those problems that they'd already solved and then compare what their solution was, the industry solution against what the kids did and they were surprisingly close and I've heard so much positive stuff back from them because they were very impressed with the kids and how far they got and the creative ideas that came out of that. Um,